Welcome to Insights for Manufacturing, the podcast that supports the UK manufacturing sector. Hosted by Jeff Beecham, the manufacturer's recruiter. Hello, welcome to Insights for Manufacturing. Uh, today, I'm joined by Kate Stranks, uh, who is the owner and director of Beanstalk Learning. Uh, hello, Kate. How are you today? Good morning. Well, not a good afternoon. Sorry. Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm I'm OK. I'm OK. Got to got to the end of another week without any major dramas. So excellent. That's, that's always, always a, a good thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on, Kate. This has been in the pipeline for some time. And um, I'll maybe just set the scene a little bit for the, the listeners or, or any viewers for the, the podcast. Um, you and I have known each other probably a couple of years now and yeah. sort of started our businesses roughly at the same time. I think you were two or three months ahead of me. Um, so 2019 was a, you know, a, an exciting year. And then, <laughs> and then we had a pandemic. So uh, how are things I mean, been? I know, you couldn't call yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you couldn't call it, could you, that that was going to happen? Yeah, abs- absolutely. So learning and development, um, it, it's a huge topic and, and one that, you know, I think some businesses fail to recognise as, as key to their, their growth and success. So, you know, from your perspective, what are the key challenges for businesses when it comes to, to learning and development? Uh, I mean, you're right. It's a massive subject and a really big question um, mm. as well. But Some of my thoughts around this are sometimes it's about the legacy of what training is um, and people expect to be sat in a classroom with a teacher who is uh, sharing their knowledge um, with them. So I think there's um, I think that sometimes there's a disconnect there because for me, um, learning and development is about you as an individual and developing yourself and uh, taking accountability for that. And that doesn't always entail then obviously sitting sitting in a classroom. Um, I think there are uh, poor experiences from education which puts people off wanting to learn in the first place and thinking that um, perhaps they could um, just kind of by osmosis get the get the skills and knowledge perhaps that they need right because they've had this bad experience in in education yeah I think it's one of the one of the challenges of really getting um development kind of embedded into a business is why fix what's not broken you know a lot a lot of businesses they do well they you know they make turn over great profits um mm. but it's all that stuff that sits behind perhaps where turnover is really high or customer service isn't as great as it could be um engagement might be low people might be missing their deadlines for projects or or for getting products out of the out of the door so whilst those things might be happening again but we're making profit so what you know why do we need to worry about it um and and often actually one of the biggest challenges i think is around the culture of an organization um if it's not something that's given a priority or high enough up on the agenda, it makes it really difficult for people to be able to develop above and beyond the skill that they need for their role. So it might, yeah. that which might be very technical or, or some knowledge that they might need, um, but anything above and beyond that, it's just seen as it's not necessary. We only need you to know this stuff. So um, I think that's um, that can be a challenge as well for, for people within businesses who want to could because just because the business doesn't have a culture of learning doesn't mean that there aren't people in it that want to so yeah yeah, I think there are definitely some of the some of the challenges and where process is put before people as well yeah absolutely it's quite a common uh a common issue really I mean just on culture I mean you know that in itself we could do a whole series of podcasts oh gosh Uh, yes you know just on just on culture it's something that I've become really uh, passionate about over the sort of last, I don't know, sort of eight, nine, ten years. Um, you know, I started off in in sort of technical recruitment where it was more about the the skill set um, as, mm. as opposed to cu- culture, really. But as I've moved more towards sort of managerial and leadership roles, culture just comes to the fore, and it's just so uh, it's just so important, isn't it? I mean, it, it seems to me that even before the great resignation if, if that is or isn't a thing i think the media have probably blown it a little bit out of proportion but there's definitely something 
in, in the current market at the moment that, that's going on. But I did find before all this that businesses have sort of started to wake up to the fact that people matter and, you know, a great business is achieved through having a, a, a great culture. So learning and development, how does that help to, you know, help to create and then sustain a great culture? Um, well, we can't do it on our own. Let's first of all say that <laughs> it's, uh, I've been I've been in organisations where that's the expectation, but uh, we need um, it needs to be felt across the whole of whole of a business, um, and learning has to be seen as something that's really important. Yeah. Um, but in terms of how we then, if if that desire is there, then it's you know development has to be really experiential it has to be practical you need to be able to apply what you whatever it is that you're learning into um into situations it needs to be enjoyable a little bit uncomfortable sometimes because if it's not uncomfortable then perhaps you aren't pushing yourself out of um out of that zone of of uh, of work that you normally do um i have a, a friend who goes running and she very proudly tells me that she never she's never out of breath so she runs like five six k um uh, every time she goes out yeah and i'm never out of breath and i'm like but that means that you're not pushing yourself then if you're never out of breath you that actually you're not getting fitter you're just yeah. able to run that distance um, and that's exactly the same um from a learning point of view if it doesn't feel a bit uncomfortable or a bit um uh, kind of not normal then uh, then it's not doing its job um because you're just either confirming your own uh, your own level of knowledge um but certainly not perhaps learning anything new um and then lots there's lots making sure that the message around development isn't just about sitting in a classroom um, yeah. I, I think that is where it, it exists still in organizations that that's where learning has to happen um, and that's not true it can happen you can be sitting in a meeting and thinking about how's my What's my interaction like with this person? Why am I feeling frustrated? Why can't I um, articulate my, how I'm feeling? And if you reflect on that and, and go into your next meeting and, and feel like you're performing better, then that's still that's learning. Yeah. And I think that's that's what creates then the culture of let's become an organisation where we are always thinking about how we can do things better or different. Yeah, absolutely. And a, a good point you make about, you know, learning and development being a culture I mean you, you can have you can have businesses that are you know they sort of try and grow a, a culture of marketing for example where every every single person in the business is a is a sort of ambassador for the for the organization mm. and um yeah learning and development it, it, it's about the individuals but the, there seems to be a need for a, a sort of joined up approach and a joined up sort of thinking and agreement that it's it's better for everybody you know the individuals and the business to embrace that sort of culture of learning you know because otherwise how how is the business going to move forward if 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 the individuals in the business are you know sort of plateaued out and they're not um you know learning new skills or enhancing what they've already got um it's sort of certainly from a manufacturing point of view um you know a lot of businesses are, are into continuous improvement and there are Absolutely. lots of lots of initiatives that go on on the factory floor in terms of you know manufacturing processes but then are you continually improving your people are you, are you improving the culture and uh i just think that's really important as well the two need to go hand in hand I was going to say it's like it's like taking that lean mentality, isn't it, of of process and going, okay, how do we make that work then with our with our people? Because um, the world changes, and boy, do we know that more than ever at the moment of, in terms of what's happened. So, absolutely, never a uh, never never two days the same. Now you mentioned uh, the, the sort of classroom environment, Kate. Uh, mm. I was going to ask you, you know, with with what's happened with the pandemic, how has that affected the take up of l d consultancy you know in terms of the impact of you know the online versus offline training because i know you do both you know yeah. you'll go and visit uh clients and, and deliver you know development and training in person has the opinion of, of businesses or individuals changed dramatically throughout the pandemic what, what what are people's preferences 
in terms of being face to face versus being online yeah yeah um, and, and the benefits of, of of either yeah so if you'd have asked me three years ago if you could deliver leadership training do coaching um talk about um you know other skills or behaviors that you might need to be changed if you could do that in a virtual classroom i would have laughed in your face and said don't be ridiculous um it's obviously obviously much better when it's face to face um however the last two years has taught us that there is there is a hundred percent place for for virtual world and whilst it is it is different and it's and it's more of a challenge actually from a facilitator point of view because there's lots of different appreciations that you have to have you mm. know particularly if if you're only perhaps doing a couple of hours with with somebody virtually you don't know where they've been before and where they've been after and if they're working from home and in the virtual world for what, however many hours that day you've got to appreciate that you know their head might not be 100% um, yeah. with you but then those challenges exist slightly in a slightly different way but they exist in the classroom as well you know people come in and there's a big project that's approaching its deadline or um something happens in the business that might um divert their attention so again you know you have to you have to have a skill so it's i would say it's a different skill delivering online to what it is delivering face to face they both have their benefits virtually i have found that people tend to be um, more open because it be i think it feels more confidential if that yeah. makes sense because it is literally it's you and a, and a screen of six seven twelve boxes yeah. so so that's the definite benefit of being virtual and of course you know the obvious efficiencies of no travel no hotels no venues all of that kind of thing no lunches yeah. um uh, but then face to face the you that that opportunity to have those those conversations while you're going and making a cup of tea and a break or um, or whatever of course that's that's still also really really important so they both have definite benefits um but i think in terms of effectiveness i think they are both really good um which is a massive u-turn for me you know and i went <laughs> through a huge learning huge learning curve uh, working out how the technology worked and how to make it great and still engaging and still um all, you know all of that piece experiential and working out how do i you know when they're everyone's supposed to be standing in a circle talking about how they're feeling how on earth do i do that in the virtual world so lots of um lots of learning for me uh, yeah. over the last two years as well to make it work well for the people that are coming along yeah i guess that your your customers your clients have that choice now as well don't they you know you, they you can offer you know whatever suits them and that's good yes. to have that, that other offering really yeah. Yeah, and the biggest but biggest bonus of all of virtual is you can get people from everywhere in the same place um, that with no travelling involved, which is which is amazing. And then people are interacting with their colleagues that perhaps they've only ever had a phone call with, you know. So it's that's really nice. That's a real bonus. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing that. What what are the what you know for for businesses that that either haven't engaged with a with an external l and consultant or you know they, they do it very very periodically what what are the benefits of using an external l and consultant like like yourself at, at beanstalk well um uh we have fresh eyes so we are walking into your business um not not knowing enough we'll know something obviously because we'll have had conversations beforehand but not knowing enough really to make any judgments or have any right. preconceptions so we'll have fresh eyes um and what that allows us to do is because we're seeing things for the first time is ask all those questions that perhaps you don't when you're you know in your in your day to day it, it's it's harder isn't it to take that step back and look at bigger picture whereas we we have that advantage of we're we're always looking at bigger picture because yep. we're not in the detail of running the business um day to day um and that what that allows us to do then is bring a different perspective perhaps to the challenges that you're facing as an organization or as individuals and then how do we how do we support and help with those challenges so uh, that's the biggest benefit yeah. So, you know, from 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 your client's perspective, it's, you know, you're offering an unbiased, uh, you know, look at, you know, where where they are, where the individual is, where the business are in terms of, you know, learning and development. And, you know, you're going in with with no preconceived ideas or, or opinions about the business. So sometimes too much knowledge being too close to it 
doesn't help. Um, mm. you, you, you're removed far enough from it to be able to to see things that that the that the you know the leaders that are too close to it can't see. Um, I guess you know it's good to have that that unbiased opinion you know from outside of the outside of the company wanted to ask you about a, a, a fairly uh, a fairly hot topic that seems to be coming up more and more you know any sort of hr people that i talk to uh, certainly over the last sort of year or so you know emotional intelligence is yeah. is creeping right up there mm -hmm. on the agenda and um you know I, I suppose you know all of us will you know be at certain points of that journey uh, in terms of uh, of uh, emotional intelligence, and I know, I know from my own personal perspective, I, I'm not the same person. I, d I don't have the same outlook and sometimes reactions to certain things that, that I did maybe ten years ago. Um, and it's something that you know, you, well, I've certainly had to work at um, on and off over the years. And you know, from a leadership perspective, it's just fundamental that you know leaders have have got this. This emotional intelligence you know they, they might be great from a from a financial perspective and you know from a, a technical perspective and, and running a business but it's the um you know the sort of soft skills i, I know that's a bit of a you know a phrase that a lot, a lot of individuals hate these days i actually caught, caught a, 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 a video this morning on on linkedin from from joe britain and she was having a bit of a rant about you know we, soft skills you know and it, it's an area that it's interesting you know without those people skills being able to interact and you know listen to somebody with, with a bit of empathy can be an absolute game changer so yeah from what you see in your in your day-to-day -day work with, with clients how important is emotional intelligence in, in leadership uh, well, if um, I would say extremely important, if you're going to do it on a scale of one to 10, I think I'd probably say about 100, um, <laughs> which, which feels a bit X factor, but, you know, like 150 percent or whatever. Yeah. Um, but what it does is by, by being able. So it's actually a fairly recent construct. It's only started to kind of feed into the business world about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and Dan Goldman is the is the kind of. Um, patriarch of it I suppose there's lots of variations uh, are starting to emerge now yeah. um, but if you look at at the legacy of leadership of, of how we learn we learn from people around us don't we so if our leaders previously didn't really show much vulnerability weren't very aware of what was what their impact of themselves were on others then you might then decide as a leader that's how that's how you're going to come across but we know that that doesn't work as well in the world sure. of work today um so having that ability to to re so really looking into yourself and so who am i what what happens when this happens what are my triggers what's the what are my preferences and then understanding how to use those in conversations and interactions that you have with with other people yeah and and actually going it's okay i know that's my trigger and this is what happens but having that conversation to go but but if we continue our conversation that for, for me, I know for certain triggers, I will I'll just go, oh, my, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. But then once that once that's happened, I know that I can I can then kind of come back down, if you like, and yeah. have uh, have a reasonable conversation about. OK, so that was my reaction. Let's explore that. Um, and it just allows you to be more human, just mm -hmm. to be more of a human being. That's what we are. And we're complicated and complex. And um, sometimes, you know, we don't understand ourselves, let alone understanding every, anybody else. <laughs> So without yeah. it, uh, it makes it really difficult to those relationships. And if you haven't got really good relationships with your team, with your peers, your boss, your colleagues, you know, then it makes it it just makes it more difficult to, yeah. to be in a space where you might feel a bit, you know, like you're on the outskirts of something or there's, um, you know, like there's a clique that you're part of, but but every, you know other people that are looking in and going, why aren't we, what's going on there? So there's all these kind of little micro cultures that start to happen. Yeah. Um, whereas if we're just we're open, 
we understand ourselves, we understand each other, and we use that to then build really great relationships, then it, that's got to be a better place to, to live and work in, doesn't it? Certainly sounds like the way forward for me. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a strong advocate. So uh, interested to find out, have, have you got three top tips for manufacturing businesses? It's a manufacturing podcast, after all. Three top tips for a manufacturing business considering external l and support i think you know it, actually it doesn't matter that it's that it's whether it's manufacturing finance marketing agency it actually it doesn't really matter my my three top tips would be um be really clear on the difference that you want to see so what's happening that you don't like that you want to be different so be really clear on that and i think okay. and i've said this i think already um you know have you got high turnover in your in your organization are people um, missing their deadlines is customer service not as good as you want it to be what is it that you want to be new or different um, and quite often um, organizations don't recognize that it's the leadership um, that's that might be uh, causing some of these issues because of how people are being treated yeah. so be really clear um, on that and that and that fits regardless of the sector that um, that you're in um, be open-minded to who your supplier can be so to who, whoever it is that you're thinking of engaging mm. and, and again we've I've, I've said this already it doesn't matter if we don't necessarily have experience within the manufacturing sector because what that gives us is that that fresh eyes perspective and allows yep. us to come in without preconception and without judgment um, and that can prove to be far more helpful than somebody coming in who's always worked um, in the manufacturing environment. I have sure. worked in a manufacturing environment, by the way, um, yes. but uh, but it was a while ago, and um, so and um, you know the world has changed since since I was in it, so it'll be very different, I'm sure. Uh, and just be really brave because having having a development a learning culture in your organisation will make a big difference to how it operates and. Um, and it will reduce kind of those hidden costs. So you might go, well, no, I'm not making any more sales or uh, my net profit isn't increasing, but look at all those hidden costs of, of and you know this, how much does it cost to recruit a person? Yeah. I think some figures came out the other day. It's between kind of 18,000 and 35,000 pounds, isn't it, to recruit? And then you've got how long does it take them to get up to speed and, and all of that kind of thing. So that, which is hidden costs that a lot of organisations don't um, notice or, or recognise. Yep. Um, and just it might be uncomfortable sometimes, but it's it will make things better. That's it. It's, it's all about change and, uh, you know, helping these companies through that that transition, isn't it? It's, I suppose it's going to be a bit scary to begin with, but it's it's what we said at the beginning of the conversation you know it's about pushing it's like the your, your friend that goes out running you know if you're not pushing yourself you, you you're not going to get any further than where you where, where you are currently so yeah there's a great book by Jim Collins um and he talks about what he says is what got you here won't get you there so yeah. whilst you might be re in that really successful position of running 10k on a Sunday if you don't do something different and run 15 you no know, so you can run 15k on a Sunday then you you know what's what's going to fill that gap and and of course there'll be lots of other things in an organization that can can do that but support yeah. it with some development and and um, look after your people and it will happen much easier brilliant so how do you know if a if, if a business is is going to be a good fit for your your suite of services Kate how, how do you how do you go about identifying the right sort of businesses um goodness me that's a loaded question isn't it is there a, <laughs> uh let me think about that is there a right answer i suppose that's okay so from a very personal perspective if you have a connection in that very first meeting you know when they're when they've made the decision that they want some somebody to come in and help them yep. and it's me that they reach out to if there's a real connection in that first call then that gets me very excited um and kind of what are their expectations so um i've i've run out of fairy dust so i you know if you go into a classroom for a, a day or two you're not going to come out a new person you'll come out with some new ideas and some new learning but actually putting it into practice is, is that's where that's where the magic happens yeah so 
if that's their expectation, then I'm probably not the right person because they won't get what they want. However, if it's a broader conversation around we want to make a difference, we want to embed this learning, we want people to start to look after their people differently. Yeah. That that's kind of that's music to my ears in terms of um how what their approach is and what they would like to be different. And if they, you know, well we we'd like sales to be up a month after well that's not going to happen because it takes to we all know it takes yeah. time to form new habits doesn't it so absolutely um yeah and also who's interested so i was having a conversation last week with a with a client and he wanted to join the some of the leadership development that i'm doing with his team um mm. and i and i was like okay that that's fine but i know you've done this before so what are you going to get out of that session um, and he said, well, I'll know what they're learning. I'll be um, so which makes sure that I'm consistent and I'm using the same language and same tools that they're learning. Yep. It would be a great refresher for me. And I was like, oh, if I could just bottle you that yep. would, and put you in every organisation, then that would be amazing. Brilliant. And I suppose you've got to get a certain amount of, of buy in from you know the sort of the the, the, the top leaders in businesses, 100%. because like anything else, it's like the whole you know, diversity, equality and inclusion stuff, you know, and, unless the organisation from top to bottom is up for it. Yeah. You know, you can do all this great work, but it sort of falls a little bit flat. So I, I suppose you're looking for businesses that truly believe and there's a reason why they need the learning and development, but they are, they, they're not just doing it as a tick box exercise. It's, mm. there's a, there's a real, benefit and they're, they're, they're almost on that journey they know where they want to get to and they're sort of living the whole experience really would, would you say that was a reasonable description of yeah yeah definitely it, ha it has to be part of something bigger I, I think yeah um and 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 appreciating that you know or a couple of hours online is not going to make a difference I guess is uh, that's you know a couple of hours online or a day in a classroom isn't going to make a difference yeah goes back to the whole you know you've got to have an L&D culture haven't you definitely okay yeah, so definitely. We, we're sort of coming out the back of Covid uh you're what coming up to three years in now uh as a, yeah. as a business owner exciting times what's next for you Kate for the rest of 2022 um so I am creating some e-learning, which which is purely individual led. There's uh, there's they're they're all um, well they're all videos of me talking, so with a few slides kind of slotted in. Yeah. Um, but it's not uh, it's not guided learning as if as if I was live, obviously. So um, and the first the first one that's and it's available now is emotion intelligence. Um, oh. because it's a hot topic yep. um, and it's you can either uh, use it as um, kind of a foundation to then go and find out some more or as a bit of a refresher for yourself if you if you've already done lots of reading or development around it um, previously yeah. so that's the purpose of that um, I'm working on and that'll be ready at the end of August I, I didn't realize how long it took to film and edit it yourself <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so that will be ready at the end of August um, to go live. That's that will be around um, coaching. So coaching as a as a manager with your team and and the kind of premise that sits behind that, and then also more formal coaching where um, you know you put put time aside and and you uh, uh, have a conversation with the person that you need that wants to be um, better or different at something that they're doing. Yeah. So so that's coming. So I'm so and then I'll kind of the suite will build as the year goes on and and just to kind of continue to grow my offer really um beyond a workshop uh, i mean yeah. that that if you know if you're looking at me and you're coming to my website you'll see there are options to to do that to just do workshops but having that kind of structure of support around it be that helping people put together personal development plans doing coaching setting up um uh, I call them action learning groups, but they're where, you know, people get together and share what's happening for, for them um, very short. So uh, and what, what's what gone really well for them, what perhaps hasn't gone quite so well that they've tried and, and it hasn't worked as well as they thought it might. So okay. 
just kind of having that structure around it. So I'm a bit more of a consultant rather than a deliverer. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So exciting times. I'm sure, yes. you know, the year will just get better and better. Um, markets are I hope so. picking up, I think, <laughs> generally. Touch wood. We've got a few things going on in the world, but um yeah, I think we're heading uh, heading in the right direction. So, uh, well, that, yes, that pretty much wraps course. up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed our discussion. Uh, thanks again to, to Kate Stranks at no, Beanstalk Learning. Thanks, everybody, for, for listening. Look out for the next episode of, of Insights for Manufacturing and see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>